Danger. Danger, Will Robinson. I grew up watching a TV show called Lost in Space. The robot used to always say that. Danger. Danger. That does not compute. That does not compute. That robot was, that was so cool back in the old pro 70s when I watched it when I was a kid. And we need to choose carefully in this life. We really need to recognize the signs of our times. Danger, danger. Two guys had a talk on X, formerly known as Twitter, the other day. Two famous guys on this planet, uh, Donald Trump and Elon Musk. And the world is in uproar over it. The EU is threatening to arrest Elon Musk. The United Auto Workers is suing Donald Trump. Like, what in the world is going on? We have crazy things going on that we need to talk about. These two guys were trying to warn people that they think we're on the verge of thermonuclear war, World War III. Well, that's something we need to talk about, maybe. They're saying we're on the verge of collapsing the economic system. Probably something we should talk about. These are two guys with experience with lots of money doing things. I'd like to hear what they say. But people want to arrest them and sue them. This is nutty. This is crazy. We need to be aware of the times that we live in. Because if you choose the fake, you get the flames. If you choose the Lord, you get life. I think these two men are finally starting to recognize some of the serious nature of the spiritual warfare that we're in. Uh, they talked about the bullet that went through Donald Trump's ear. And Donald Trump recognized that that's fate. That's God is in control of that. That was a miracle. He calls it a miracle. People are waking up to the spiritual situation of this world. And we do need to talk about it. Uh, the other day, I was researching or trying to look up the lyrics to an old Bob Dylan song. He said something I thought, did I remember that right? He said, you've got to serve someone. You've got to serve someone. I'm writing a book on the word control. And I'm looking at our relationships to each other. We're not supposed to control each other. We're not supposed to control each other's speech. We're supposed to be free. To a point, until you're harming someone. But speech, I, I haven't seen anybody die from words. Now, I see people die from actions, but not words. It's okay to talk. We need to talk. Uh, so after I was listening, I, I wanted to document what I thought I heard in the Bob Dylan song. The next song that came up was a Johnny Cash song. It's called The Man Comes Around. This song instantly brought tears to my eyes. Like, I was not prepared for that. What, what was that all about? Where did that come from? I want you to hear some of the words to that Johnny Cash song. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. There's a man going around taking names. And he decides who to free and who to blame. Everybody won't be treated all the same. There will be a golden ladder reaching down when the man comes around. Now, to me, I read into that a prophetic thing like the book of Revelation, Jesus coming back, people getting judged. And, and after I thought about that, there's going to be a great roundup. There's going to be a great roundup of people, of souls. And we're going to be sorted out. God is very orderly. He sorts things into groups. He calls some good and he calls some bad. The things he calls good, he blesses. And prospers and the things he calls bad they get eliminated some more words from that song the hairs on your arm will stand up at the terror in each sip and each sup 
Will you partake of that last offered cup, or disappear into the potter's ground when the man comes around? He's, he's warning us, Jesus is coming back. That's what Paul's trying to do in Romans chapter 11. The Jewish people of that day, they were not hearing it. They wanted Paul arrested. Kind of like the EU wants to arrest Elon Musk. Like they didn't want to hear this. No, 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 no. We can't hear that. He's trying to reconcile to them. Things are changing in the world and you better be aware of it. There's nothing different today. 2024. George or Orwell talked about these times in his book 1984. So 40, 40 years ago, uh, since since 1984, but then, you know, he wrote that, what, in the 40s or 50s? We're living in George Orwell times, I think. This is, this is time to be aware of what's going down. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, we're going to read Romans chapter 11. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. For I myself am Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he appeals to God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets, they have demolished your altars, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what is God's reply to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed a knee, a knee to Baal. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. But if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. What then? Israel failed to obtain what it was seeking. The elect obtained it. But the rest were hardened. As it is written, God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes that would not see, and ears that would not hear, down to this very day. And David says, Let their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a retribution for them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see, and bend their backs forever. So I ask, did they stumble in order that they might fall? By no means. Rather, through their trespass, salvation has come to the Gentiles, so as to make Israel jealous. Now, if their trespass means riches for the world, and if their failure means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? Now, I am speaking to you Gentiles inasmuch then as I am an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? If the dough offered as first fruits is holy, so is the whole lump. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, although you, a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing root of the olive tree, do not be arrogant towards the branches. If you are, remember, it is not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. Then you will say, branches were broken off, so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief. But you stand fast through faith. So do not become proud, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Note the kindness and the severity of God. Severity towards those who have fallen. But God's kindness to you, provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. And even they, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in. For God has the power to graft them in again. But if you were cut out from what is by nature 
a wild olive tree and grafted, contrary to nature, into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted back into their own olive tree? Lest you be wise in your own sight, I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery, brothers. A partial hardening has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved, as it is written. The Deliverer will come from Zion. He will banish ungodliness from Jacob. And this will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. As regard... As regards the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you they may also receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. Oh, the depth and riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and how inscrutable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid. For from high, through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Wow. If that chapter doesn't relate today, I, I don't know what does. I, 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 that's, that's some powerful stuff if you process that mentally. Um, in computer programming, the word if is a conditional statement. Picture if, then. If this happens, then this happens. That's what Paul's talking about. If and then. But I've said before, if is a really big word in the Bible. When you see if, you better pay attention. Because it probably applies to you. I'm going to read verse 22. And the word if is not in there. But it's implied. I, I want you to look for the if in this verse. Verse 22. Note then the kindness and the severity of God. Severity toward those who have fallen. But God's kindness to you, provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise you too will be cut off. That word provided. Provided you continue. It's if you continue. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. That's a warning. That's a warning. Uh, and it shows up again in the very next verse. And even they, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in. For God has the power to graft them in again. He's talking about the rebellious Jewish people. They still have a chance to turn. That's what Paul is talking about. And, But here's the interesting thing. I'm going to skip ahead to verse 32. For God has consigned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. God created us. He gave us a free will. We, rebel, we rebelled against him. All of us. We're all born with that sinful nature. All. But he can have mercy on all. He... That free will, God can work with that. But we have to work with God. We're all born sinners. Nobody escapes that. That's really important to recognize in you and the kids you're raising and the people around you. There, there's no way out of that sin nature except through Jesus and what he did. When he died and shed his blood, he paid for all of our sins. So, But we have to grab hold of that. We have to have faith in that. That's our only way through. That's what Johnny Cash is warning us. That's what the Bible is warning us. That's what I'm trying to warn my modern culture. Be careful. Be careful. Verse 33, powerful verse here. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. 
How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. You've got to trust God's character. You, he cares about you. He cares about me. He cares about everyone around us. Often we don't. I know I don't. But God does. And he gives all of us a way to spend time with him. To have a relationship with him. Everyone. That's mind-blowing. How could he do that? He gives everyone a chance. We're the ones who blow it. So, if you think your life is all about you, you may want to think twice. Listen to verse 36. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Everything revolves around God. It doesn't revolve around you. It doesn't revolve around me. We've got to get our life in alignment with Him. Because that if, that big if, that's up to us. we got to get with His program. He doesn't have to get with our program. He won't be canceled. He won't be canceled. He's not sharing misinformation or disinformation. God's sharing life and truth with us. We need to recognize that. We need to help the people around us recognize that. So today I challenge you, go out there. Go bring glory to God today. Thermonuclear war, the days could be close. We don't have much time to waste. Be careful. Be a bright light. Go do your thing, the thing that God has planned for you. Go bring glory to God today. See you later.